Hello, welcome back to Sarah Says. Uh, welcome to my channel. I know I normally do vlogs and like fun things around London, but today I thought I would do like a sit down chat and talk about a company that really screwed me over, so. This one's gonna be a long one. There's a lot to talk about, there's a lot to pack into this. But basically I'm gonna be kind of talking about while well, sipping my cup of lovely tea. Got my new cup, a cup, mug, I don't know. It says, hurry up, I'm gasping. Anyway, um, just talk about this company that I went through and my experience and why you shouldn't go through them and hopefully help other people like myself because they really suck. So yeah, buckle up, man, buckle up. Okay, so this all started about when I was like 16. I heard about this company called Global Work and Travel. And basically this company is a company that supplies workers and work work working holidays. You can do things like au pairing, teaching, working holiday. And basically the whole premise is, is that you like pay them heaps of money. They set you up a job and accommodation in your chosen area. And my chosen area was working holiday in England, London. And on the like, website it says all these inclusions these trip inclusions things being like visa help false 24-hour support social fun activities accommodation and then the list of places in london england and london being the top so as a young person wanting to go to london not knowing how to do it because i'm only 18 i am yet i've proven everybody wrong though 18 year olds can move countries by themselves um, I thought that this was super appealing for a multitude of reasons. It was aimed at young people like me, who didn't know how to get past that barrier, and they kind of like was there, like, we can help you if you pay us money. So I think the trip, you can go for 6 months, 12 months, 24 months, and now, because of the mobility visa, you can go for longer, you can go for another year. But the price remains the standard. It's like a set price and it's around 2,500 lovely New Zealand dollars, which as a 17 year old is a lot of money. It just as it anything is a lot of money. So, and when you pay that kind of money, you expect to get all those things that they list. There's like 20 things that they list. Like you, you expect to get them back. You expect to get what you pay for kind of thing. Oh, this is really hot. <laughs> but, yeah, so I booked with them when I was 17 and I paid the money. You also pay a deposit and that's kind of the money you pay before you pay your big 2500 And I think the deposit was around $300, maybe 500 which is a lot. And then the first thing that happens is you get a trip coordinator. And that person kind of calls you up on the phone, tells you the all inclusions, what you're eligible for. Uh, the, the trip in general, the trip as a whole, and they say, do you want to go through with it? And then they send you the bill, you pay it off. You can pay it off slowly, you can pay it off all together. I think I paid it off all together. And yeah, basically that's it. The trip is set in stone. Uh, you, you kind of pick the month you want to go and the year, obviously. I picked March. Then you get a travel coordinator who organizes things like your travel insurance and your flights. And that is super exciting. Until they prescribed me my travel insurance and I knew that something was wrong. So I got given my quote for my travel insurance for two years because I thought might as well book for two years. It's... Anyway. And I nearly dropped dead. It was over 5,000 New Zealand dollars for travel insurance. Bearing in mind that like you don't need travel insurance like much like you don't really need it you just need it to get here and like go traveling you need it but you don't need it for two years and they say that like some countries won't let you in in their border which is completely untrue because they don't actually ask for your documents they just you scan your passport and bob's your uncle but genuinely <laughs> it was too like i was not expecting it to be that much money it was <sighs> obviously like a partner thing like most of their premises are it's partner organizations it's partner groups and they have those and that was obviously the travel company was like travel insurance company was one of their partners in crime i'm gonna say partners in crime 
it was fraud. It was too expensive and unaffordable and I'm, I, it actually makes me sick to think that people willingly pay that when they don't need to. Um, yeah, so I actually, my dad helped me find a different one, but they kind of guilt tripped me into it saying, oh, like, be careful. You might, you may not be able to like stay for the full year, which is terrifying when you're 17 and you have no idea anything about England, what their laws are, but it's completely untrue. You really don't need travel insurance for that much. And also the whole health one, it's covered by your NHS. So you don't need the whole health insurance. You don't need the COVID thing. It's covered by NHS. And I think it's bollocks that they try to get money from it because people like me, vulnerable, will probably pay it, which makes me sick to think that people actually do, but I don't know. The next thing was my flights. <laughs> my flight, as you may know, if you've watched previous video, a previous video, I talk about how my flight to London wasn't actually that good. It was through Budget Airline. Um, I didn't book it myself. I chose the date because I asked like, hey, when do you want to go? I said, I want to leave late March. So they give me the quote and I said, I want to leave from Auckland Airport. Okay, and I want to land in London because I'm planning to be in London. This is also, you don't have your job yet. So this is all happening like a couple, like, you know, months prior, six months prior to, um, to when you actually depart. Bear in mind, I booked it like 10 months prior, the like whole global work and travel trip. And I get given the quote and it's Auckland to Sydney, very unnecessary. Sydney to San Francisco and then San Francisco to Heathrow. And it's on a budget airline, which is United. But speaking of, United has great service, but I paid like $1,700 for that. $1,700. And I regret not booking my own for many reasons a like it's a budget airline i didn't really want to go on a budget airline and i was stressed about packing and if i went on emirates and flew through the middle east i would have been a lot less stressed you know i had 30 kgs but yeah it was a crappy airline but i thought at the time because there's other global work and travel people learning at the same time as you and i thought like i they wanting to tee us up on the same plane which is very very untrue I talked to the other people and they also said they had crappier flights as well. So I think it's just, I don't even know like why it was so expensive. Cause I remember Googling prices from Auckland. It's a lot cheaper than $1,700. Um, yeah, so I wasn't too happy with the flights. All right, I'm just having some more tea cause I'm thirsty. Oh, okay. So I already talked about the two, the trip and the travel coordinator, but then you get an arrivals coordinator who is based in London and just kind of takes care of all the visa stuff. And that's one of their main things is you get an orientation when you land and they help you set up your bank and your phone and Oyster card supposedly and like you meet other people supposedly and <laughs> make friends also supposedly. And yeah, you just, yeah. Another thing they say is five nights provide free provided accommodate private free a private no three five private no three five nights free private accommodation provided and then if you stay longer then it's up to you to supply it but this visa thing that they say they help with full visa support was a document that they sent me. It was like a one page document and yeah okay it's kind of helpful um in some respects because there are questions that are a little bit like what do i put down there but it really isn't rocket science and i know how to do it and it wasn't hard for me who applied at 17. like it was not hard to do it and they sent me this document and i was like that's not full visa support that's like giving you a document that you like fill out but it said full visa support and I was like, this is what you mean by full visa support? This doesn't feel... Anyway, I read through the document. It was like kind of helpful, but I think that was okay. Um, it still wasn't like full support, but it was all right. It was like waterline. The visa part was least of my worries. But then we go into the job. So the arrival coordinator, once again, um, but it says on their thing like guaranteed job upon arrival. 
Which makes you think, like, I'll have a job when I get there, like, it'll be all these tickety boo. <laughs> I get given an interview. I bear in mind that I mentioned a lot of times that I wanted to be based in London. It's gonna be London. I made some bull, bull crap up that I had family in London and I wanted to be close to them. I don't actually, but like, it's London. Why else would I go to England? <laughs> anyway. London it was, and they give me an interview with one of their partner organisations, Blue Dolphin, and it was crap. The interview was crap, it was 12 hours away from London, and the job sounded terrible, like I didn't like any of it, I didn't like the person who interviewed me, I just didn't like the job, and I was also thinking, like, I'm gonna get there in London, it's closer to Manchester, do I have to get my own way there? Or do they pay for that? Like, I was confused. And it's a way. It's a lot to deal with on top of jet lag and on top, on top of moving a country. And, yeah, I just wasn't really happy with the situation. And I told them, like, I'm not happy with London. Like, I wanted to be in London. I'm not happy with this. And they said, oh, so you're not taking the job? And I was like, yeah, I'm not taking the job. Like, what do you mean? I'm What? And they kind of were, like, really sad about it. And they said like, oh, so you want to be in London? I was like, girl, I literally told you like five times that I wanted to be in London. They did not listen though. Which made me think like they didn't actually have any partner organizations, even though London is literally on the top of their like information, like website thing that you look on. I was like, what the heck? <clears throat> I had never even heard of this place. I was in Philly. I still haven't heard of it like even English people haven't heard of it it's I don't even know don't ask me <sighs> but yeah that was the job situation and they said oh they also said like oh so when you arrive you probably will have interviews lined up I was like okay sweet going to my arrival my plane landed at 7 a.m in the morning on Thursday 23rd and I was meant to have private chauffeur like transfer to airport to hospital hostel and they said if my driver's not there they have i had they'll give me their contact whatsapp information so i can call be like yo what's up where are you but yeah so that was all good i obviously was on the plane for like a hundred hours felt like and i was like no <laughs> i probably won't get this information so i arrived in heathrow everything was all fine smooth sailing like the border control was like that bag was like that so i got out around like 7 30 maybe early I don't really know and I was expecting those people holding a sign that said Sarah Bonning for blow work and travel with like the chauffeur the name of the chauffeur which was like Legion so I don't know I waited I waited I looked around everyone with their signs my name was not present and I I think 20 minutes ticked by and I was like starting to panic I was like this isn't a good sign like where is my driver so I started like googling I had to get into the wi-fi googling like how to get to the hostel I didn't know King's Cross it was so stressful I was trying to google that and then like an hour went by and they still hadn't like showed up and then I got a call when like hi where are you and I was like I'm in the airport where are you like who are you yeah and they said they were in the car park and jet lagged me had to like travel through the car park Heathrow Airport which was miles away it was like a 10 minute walk just to get my private chauffeur to take me to the um, hostel accommodation, which it was a nightmare. Going to the hostel. Now, this hostel, I looked it up and online it looked great. It had like this really cool vibe, it had a bar, it had a pub, the same sort of thing. Cafe, like it looked really nice and the rooms were expensive so I was like, this is cool, it's right in the centre of London, like this is going to be great. I arrived and you probably saw, if you'd seen my vlog, my first week in London vlog, the hostel was a dive. It was a dock, like it was trashy. No kitchen, I couldn't check in. Uh, the staff were kind of rudish, they weren't great. And I was sitting in the cafe trying to have a nap. My first night was trash. And for the price that I pay, I paid Global Work Travel, I should have got my own room. Um, but yeah, I didn't get my own room and I really wish I did because like it was it was poor the room like I was put in a room full of men which isn't what you want on your first night you know 
so what you want? <laughs> and yeah, I just didn't have like a good experience in that hostel. Like I really rated it low. I didn't meet anybody. I didn't have any like interaction with people. There were lots of like young kids like staying there over the weekend. I don't know what was going on there, but I was was not happy. I met like one girl. We had like dinner. This one guy, but nothing like you know. Didn't meet any other glow work and travel people. Yeah, so the hostel was crap. Um, it was just they had a weird smell as well. The shower was a weird. Plus the maid stole my sleeping mask. Still reckon they stole it or something. They threw it in the bin. I don't even know. But yeah, the hostel was. Pfft, unbelievable for the price that I paid and it was like 60 pounds a night so I should have got like my own room the next day I had my orientation which I at first I thought it was good I look back and I think it was genuinely a big waste of time I had lined up a job interview through them at this place for the next following week and I was excited because I thought I would get the job I went to the interview, uh, orientation, sorry, and they were really accommodating, the people were lovely, um, they helped set up our bank, our phone number, which was just headaches that we didn't really need, but then again, it's a lot easier to do those sorts of things. And yeah, I had a, quite a good time there, like, it was, but I still think that the information they gave us was pointless. It's not like England is a third world country, like, we know how to navigate through it and it, they kind of treated us like young kids and maybe I was younger than the others like the others were older but I do think that it was a bit of a waste of time especially when those things aren't hard especially if you speak English setting up a bank and that you can just get a wise card until you know where you're living and that and they didn't tell us till like after that if you are planning to work in London that you have to provide your own accommodation which is a lot to be told when you just arrive and you're 18 and you have, you're really impressionable and just vulnerable. And I was like, I kind of like had already had an inkling, like I said from that interview, I had an inkling that they weren't gonna be what they made out, out to be. So I kind of was looking for places and looking for my own job. Anyway, I, um, that was all, the orientation was all right. I think it, it was all, it was a bit of a waste of time, but it was okay. Um, but then I decided to go to the interview that they set up for me. It was bad. It was another really bad interview. The lady was nice, but the interview just went bad. I don't know why. It was a commute from where I was staying as well. And then they said they'll, they'll let me know by Friday, which was like three days away. I didn't hear back till last week and that ca ca caps four weeks. And they called me Sophie. <laughs> I don't know what was going on there guys but yeah they kind of, and then I kind of sent a passive agreement um aggressive email to them be like yo literally like you promised job and accommodation and yet you did none of that so what's going on like I said what <sighs> so basically I had I've luckily found my own job really quickly actually and I landed quite a good one so to speak well landed a better one that they probably could give me <laughs> um i found my own accommodation got my own job and basically i don't want to have i don't want to have anything to do with them anymore they really did oversell themselves for what i got i think that if i were to like pay again for what i actually got i would pay less than 500 dollars new zealand dollars like i think their service was poor i think they were really crap their 24 hour helpline is a joke because I tried when I was at the airport. They really oversold themselves, over marketed, targeted young people like myself, and yeah, just made money off us. And I think, like, ultimately, they obviously they mean well. I don't want people to be hurt, but I, I, I do feel hurt. I feel really ripped off by them. I feel like I've been robbed. I've been stabbed in the back. Like it feels like I trusted them when I was 17 and yet they they didn't provide what like I literally paid them to provide, which was to give me a job, a, you know, in a pub and to like help me find accommodation. 
They didn't do any of that. And they said that they would, but they didn't. And they said that they would call me about the, my job options, but they never did that. They called me once and I missed it. Because I was at work and they never called me again. But yeah, I just think that their service was, was trash. I don't think that they should be allowed to be charging that much for what you get. And I, it breaks my heart to think what those people who only do six months are paying. You know, like, they paid the same price as me, and I was doing 24, so I think... Another thing I'll just point out is that you have to also stay for a minimum of six months at each partner job, and I think that's also a rort as well. Like, if you were really homesick or you really hate the job, just... Like, I would just leave, but they... You would burn their bridges with them, and you don't want to do that, even though I'm literally doing it now. But, like, I've had a bad experience with them, and I told them that, and I don't think they'll like taking the feedback because they're a company you know they're a big organization and basically what i want you to take away from this is don't book through them they're trash i will help you get to if you want to move countries i know how to do it i i have experience i'm 18 but i have this experience now i know how to do it i know how hard it is i know the process and i i tried and failed but like i'm much better off now I know I can help with the visa, the the move itself, leaving home, the, everything, finding a job, finding a flat in London. It's, you can do it without them. Like you don't need that help. I think if you've never traveled before, then go for it. But it's just, it's not worth the money. I just think I could have saved so much more if I didn't go through them. I would have saved like over five grand probably if I, maybe three, maybe that's a bit of a stretch, but. I would have saved so much more if I didn't go with them and I really want other people to save their money and not book through them. But yeah, that was my little rant. Um, <laughs> those videos I mentioned before, the whole flat, the whole fun, living in London thing, move it to London, will be separate. I will be posting more on that. I'm a little bit busy with stretch with time at the moment with work and that. And then we go to Edinburgh. But those videos will be happening probably in the next like month or so just look out for them but yeah do subscribe i promise you i will be better than global work and travel i'll help you but yeah i hope you enjoy this video this rant so to speak and yeah have a great day thanks for watching subscribe you won't regret it <laughs>